We play and call it work. Beginning of a space marine. They shall be my finest warriors, these men who give of themselves to me. Like clay I shall mold them in the furnace of war, I shall forge them. They shall be of iron will and steely sinew. In great armor I shall clad them, and with the mightiest weapons they shall be armed. They will be untouched by plague or disease. No sickness shall blight them. They shall have such tactics, strategies, and machines that no foe will best them in battle. They are my bulwark against the terror. They are the defenders of humanity. They are my space marines. And they shall know no fear. The Emperor of Mankind. Space Marines' aspirants are chosen based on the traits such as aggression and courage. Typically, chapters recruit from planets classed as death worlds, as only the strong are able to eke out an existence. Each different chapter has different trials for potential candidates, but all emphasize martial prowess, physical hardiness, and unflinching fearlessness. Hopeful recruits must be male and typically between the age of 10 to 16. If an individual survives the selection process, they are taken by the chapter to begin the process of transforming into a full Astartes. Regardless of how capable a successful neophyte is, they require years of intense modification to become one of the Imperium's angels of death. The first step is physical and psychological testing to ensure both the body and the mind of the youth is capable of withstanding the hardships of the transformation into Astartes. If those tests are passed, the neophyte is subjected to grueling bouts of arduous training and intense psychological conditioning. This alone is not enough. So various organs are implanted into the recruit and over the years, this will alter his body to create a being that is capable beyond any mortal man. The Maintainer, a second heart, added to boost the capability of the circulatory system and act as a failsafe in the case of damage to the primary heart. The Iron Heart, also known as the Osmodula. This is a gland added to promote the growth and strengthening of the skeletal system. The force of strength. The biscopia is responsible for stimulating the muscular development of the aspirant. The blood maker. The hemostamen modifies the blood so it is vastly more capable of delivering oxygen-rich blood around the body. The healer, also known as the Laramin's organ, as releases specialized cells called Laramin cells that attach themselves to the naturally occurring white blood cells and dramatically reduces the amount of time it takes an Astartes to recover from any injuries. The unsleeping, The catalepsian node alters the way the brain rests. The marine is able to selectively shut off parts of his brain and still be aware of his surroundings. This is not a permanent replacement for sleep, but rather a temporary way for the marine to stay awake for days when necessary. The neutralizer. The preomnor is a pre-stomach that is able to analyze and neutralize any hazardous materials to the marine. The Remembrancer, called the Omophagia, allows the marine to absorb 
and process genetic material linked to the memory, thus allowing him to learn by consuming his foe. The imbiber, a third lung, which both increases the efficiency of the respiratory system, and in the case of a toxic atmosphere, the marine is able to block out his original lungs and only use the third lung, which can still pull oxygen from normally unbreathable air. The Eye of Vengeance, also known as the oculobe, this drastically increases the marine's eyesight in both normal and low light conditions. The Sentinel, the lyman's ear renders a marine immune to motion sickness and allows him to filter out the background noise of a battle. This also provides limited protection from any sound-based attacks. The hibernator. The susan membrane is what allows a marine to enter a state of suspended animation when exposed to extreme trauma. This allows a marine to stay in this state most indefinitely until suitable medical attention can be given. The skin shield. The melanchrome allows the level of melan in a marine skin to change in reaction to exposure to harmful radiation. The purifier. The olytic kidney acts as an emergency way to quickly filter any toxins out of the marine's bloodstream, causes unconsciousness, so only used in situations of dire need. The devourer, also known as the neuroglottis, increases a marine sense of smell as well as taste. The weaver. The mucronoid allows the marine to create a cocoon around himself from secretions from his skin to seal himself from harmful environments when entering suspended animation. The poison bite, also known as the Betcher's gland. This implant makes a marine saliva acidic and allows a marine to either spit to blind his enemies or chew through most materials to escape capture. The gene seed. The progenoid glands represent the future of the chapter. They build up genetic material over time, which when harvested, allow a new set of implants to be grown to create more space marines. The black carapace. This final implant is placed below the skin and allows the marine to fully integrate with his power armor, acting as connection between the marine's nervous system and the armor's cybernetic system. What is the terror of death? That we die with our work incomplete. What is the joy of life? To die knowing our task is done. I stand alongside warriors of honor, and the warrior who acts out of honor cannot fail. His duty is honor itself. Even a warrior's death, if it is honorable, is a reward and can be no failure for it has come through duty. Seek honor as you act, and you will know no fear. A fortress is a living thing, the commander its brain, the walls its bones, the censors its eyes and ears, the troops its blood, their weapons its fists. If one organ fails, the whole dies. And if the whole dies, no single organ can survive alone. And above all, remember this. For a warrior, the only crime is cowardice.